So what we did a moment ago was simply a, a proof of concept to see that we've got an environment set up that we're ready to go. We either set up our real device or virtual device, created a very quick test app, and then launched it, either on the real or virtual. And it seemed that everyone was able to do that. Some people struggling with things here and there, and unfortunately there's so many variables with this that sometimes uh, I've seen so many times that if you just do it again, do it the exact same way again, then it'll work. You might have missed something the first time, and when you do it again, you saw what you missed. Uh, so you shut down the emulator and you launch it again. You do the taco run again. You, you just do the same thing you did again and see if anything w was different. And so it looks like for like 95% of us, it's working. And if you're one of the 5% that it's not, it is frustrating. But all I can say during the class, if you brought your device and you really wanted it to work and it's not working, instead of trying to struggle to keep getting this to work, use a virtual device for the moment until we can figure it out. So I've given you some new handouts. Let me show you back on the network folder. If you go back to computer window, Open up computer, open up network location, classroom data drive Z. And then scroll down to find our class, which is Campus Android 2. I've put in there instructions number uh, 4 and 5. So if you open Campus Android 2, We've got number four, number five, and that's Cordova workflow one and two. I'm going to mix and match the words taco and Cordova sometimes, and maybe even say phone gap. It's all synonymous. The core technology is Cordova. The offshoot of it, the cousin of it, is phone gap, which is Adobe's version. And taco runs on top of both, so to speak, uh, so that the whole process is a little smoother, so that we set up all of the right software. So if I say one or the other, it's all the same, basically. What you want to do is you want to drag a copy of those. So drag number four and number five onto your desktop or flash drive. Again, the printer's off at the moment, so you can get it back. You can print those on when I, print, when I turn it on a little bit later. Copy number four and number five. And copy the file at the bottom called Cordova, all plugins dot text. Copy that to your desktop or flash drive also. Yes? Question? Higher? Or lower? <laughs> and so we've got here two instruction files and this which will, which will be a big uh, time saver for us. These are the plugins. These are the, this is the way for us to add the ability to take a photo, to do uh, text messaging, to do vibration on the device. All of those are plugins. We need to activate them. I've got a little command here that will do them all at once. We'll look at it in just, we'll look at it in just a moment. What I want to do is look at the PDF file. Let's go back to Campos 4, Cordova Workflow 2. I'm sorry, 1. Campus 4, <coughs> workflow 1. Double click that one. This one's got a couple of sections here. <coughs> this section here talks about creating a template. We're going to do these taco create commands and such one more time, but we're going to create a template file. We're going to create a folder that has the trunk of any of our future projects. I don't want to do taco create over and over and taco add platform Android over and over. I want to have that set up on a basic file and then I just make a copy of that file and I want to then copy that file and start anew. So that's what this handout is about. After all the components are set up, we will create a basic app. And notice here I've got here some basic command prompt commands. I haven't mentioned this one yet, but when you're typing a lot of stuff on your screen and then it gets overwhelming, you know, I've got all of these lines of code um, right here. Um, I've got all of these lines of code that go on and on on the screen, and it's a little hard to look at. We can clear the screen. So 
don't do this unless you want to clear your screen and the memory, which is CLS, clear screen. If you type CLS and press enter, it'll delete everything. So if you don't want to delete everything, don't, don't type that. But I do that a lot because my screen gets cluttered and I want to sh focus on something for you to see. I'm going to clear my screen <coughs> often. It's just my habit. That's CLS, clear screen. CD and then the folder name will change to that directory. You need to type the name of a folder that has spaces and stuff in quotes. Because in plain old DOS, there were no spaces back in the day. There were no spaces on a file name. Once there was a space, it, it would accept it as a brand new command. And so if you've got my space app, it'll think to do CD my, not CD my apps. So if you put it in quotes, you should be able to switch between folders that have spaces. CD dot dot, CD space dot dot will take you out of your current folder back one level of a folder. From your current folder out one level. DIR will show your directory listing, everything that's in that folder. Pressing up or down cycles you on your last commands. Instead of me going back again typing taco run android again and again and again, you press up one time and it brings it back, your last command. You keep pressing up and it brings back your last commands in history. You press down and it takes you forward in your history. <coughs> To change to a flash drive, it's not CD because CD is changed directory, and I guess here technically it doesn't count it as a directory. You need to type the name of your flash drive letter colon enter, and that switches to your drive. So if I'm my if I'm on my C drive and I've got my flash drive on the D drive or the G drive or F or H or whatever, I have to type the name of the drive letter colon enter, and it goes there. Go back to the C drive. Well, I type C colon enter, and it goes back to the C drive. Um, here, it doesn't give you uh, a list of your of your drives. I can't quite see what what drives you have. There's probably a command for that. Do, do any DOS pros know a command to list all drives? Which one? LS. LS is is not for not for DOS. Um, any one? Well, it's there somewhere. We can look it up. But the point is, I don't know my drive letter, so I would go to computer, and I would see. Oh, my drive is F. So if you're following my instructions word for word, and you type D colon, it's going to take you to the CD drive. You're not on the CD drive. I'm on F. You may be on G or H or something. You look at it here. Um, so there's some quick DOS commands, command prompt commands. Uh, there's, of course, you know, 200 more of them. You don't need to really deal with them. But these are the ones just for a little bit of folder navigation and such. That's all you really need. But what, I'm going to show you this trick here that might make things moot. If you have a folder anywhere, and you were on Windows, and if I hold Shift on the keyboard and right-click it, I can jump to the command prompt at that point. So what I'm saying is, if I want to go to this folder from the command prompt, I have to type cd this, cd that, cd this, cd that, to get to that folder. But if you instead right click or shift and then right click a folder, you get command window here. And that jumps you directly to that folder. So I would have had to type CD desktop, CD Adobe DC in quotes to go into it. If you shift, right click, you get command prompt directly into that folder. I'll mention that time saver again later, but um, I do that all the time. Instead of me trying to change directory to the right place, and I know where to change directory to, just shift right click it. Command prompt. Command window here. So we've got here, decide where you will save your Cordova projects. 
when you open Node Command Prompt, you'll probably be in your user folder, create a folder called Make Directory Apps. Oh, I didn't make, mention that up here, but MKDIR, Make Directory. So, I have my flash drive plugged in. I want to start to work for real now. What we did on Tuesday was just a quick test. What we did earlier today was just a test, doesn't matter either. Now I want to actually start to work on a real file, a template file that will be the basis for my future apps. So, I've plugged in my flash drive. I'm on the desktop here. My flash drive is on F. <coughs> so, F, it doesn't matter if you capitalize it or not really. F colon enter. Go to your flash drive. If yours is not F, you need to figure out your letter. I'm on the F drive. DIR to confirm. Yep, I'm on my, I'm on my Kingston 8 gigabyte right there. And I've got a folder for this class right there. I don't recommend to get complex with what we're about to do, which is to make a folder where all of our apps will exist. You probably want to create a folder for all your apps in your class folder. Mine is called 2016-03 space 180 blah blah blah. I'm going to need to type that every time, basically. I don't want to get complex and type that and mistype it and everything. I'm going to recommend <coughs> On the root level of your flash drive, let's make a folder here called Apps. That's easy to type. We're going to make a folder on our flash drive called Apps. MKDIR, make directory, space, Apps, or App, or A, or whatever you want to type that will help you type it quickly and easily without misspellings. I'm not going to call it My Apps. I'm not going to call it my Android software apps that I made myself with my own two hands. I'm just going to call it apps. And so press enter. You get no feedback unless you make a mistake, such as misspelling MKDIR. If I DIR, if I type directory, then I've got a folder right there apps. A brand new folder called apps on my flash drive. CD apps. I want to change directory into my apps. And the prompt tells me I'm on my F drive in the apps folder. If you're outside of it, you're about to create projects on the root level and lose them and all of that, be careful. Make sure you're in, a, in the folder you expect. That's what my instruction is saying here. Decide. So on step three, decide where you'll save your projects. Create a folder for them. Make, make directory apps. Type CD apps to change into that folder. Type toggle create template. We're going to create a template file, which will be our base trunk file for future projects. So I'm in my apps folder. Taco, create. Template. Let's call it template because uh, this will be the basis for all our future apps. Space. Whatever unique identifier you want, it can be anything at this point, it can be changed later. I'm going to go again with com.mylastname. The name of the folder, template. Space. The name of the app, template app. Again, all of that's editable in the config file, which we'll do later. Do you have to do the taco save apps first? No, you can have apps. You can you can go the EE Cummings way and have everything lowercase if you want. You can do it uppercases, lowercases, whatever you want. <coughs> Enter. After uh, you do this at least once, it should go a lot faster. And there it says we've got a brand new project of name template app that's the unique ID. It's being saved onto my flash drive with Taco Kit version 3, the latest. Six. CD into the template, type Taco Platform Add Android Space Browser. That's a little different than last time. I'll explain right now. CD space template. Enter. Taco 
platform add Android space browser. We're adding two platforms at once here. We've got the browser platform we saw last time, and we've got the Android platform we've been using so far. Well, if we were on the right environment, we could also do Space iOS, Space Windows, Space Blackberry. We can create all of the platforms right now. We're only going to create <coughs> Android and browser. That would be the same as Taco Platform Add Browser. Taco Platform Add Android. We're stringing them together to do them both at once. Yes. Does it create a separate file for each? It'll create only one folder, which is which is the template folder. It's the one template folder. But then inside of platforms, you will have Android, iPhone, Windows, etc. So here all we need is taco add platforms, uh, Android and browser. Enter. It's going to set us up for the basic uh, Android template and then the browser template. So I've got the explanation. This will create the Android project and the Google Chrome browser, web browser project. Taco install Rex. Android <coughs> is not required if you've done this at least once. We don't need to do Taco install Rex. Android here, I've done it for us. It downloads 500 megabytes, it sets up the basic template, and we're ready. I've done it already for us. On your home computer, you have to do that. Only once. Only once. Yes. Eventually, we get success twice because first it installed the um, Android uh, stuff and then the browser stuff. So then we've got seven type all of this. No, I've got it copy. I've got it ready for us in our text file. But what I'm saying here is we're going to add all of these uh, plugins at once. And the easy way is minimize all of this and go to, remember I asked you to copy the file called uh, Cordova All Plugins? You're going to copy that Remember, I said copy those two PDFs and Cordova All Plugins. <coughs> Inside of that Cordova Plugins text file, it's just one long command. So you can do edit, select all, edit, copy. That's going to ask, that's going to, that's going to let us use the network and splash screens and the camera and the vibration. So you're going to select that whole line. It's a long line that goes off the edge, so make sure you select everything. Edit, copy. And then on the command prompt, you cannot press Control-V like we would on a plain old Windows app. Control-V will give you Control-V. No. What you want to do is right-click and paste. You almost never use the mouse on the command prompt except copy and paste. I guess also find and mark. So right-click paste, and then it's got taco plugin add the battery plugin, the infor the network information plugin, the file writing plugin, so you can save stuff to your SD card. All of that. It should end with status bar. If it doesn't, you might not have copied everything from the text file. Press enter. That'll take a little moment. To, to connect back to the Cordova mothership and download all of the software. And there's my camera, there's my battery status, so this will take weeks. Just one moment. What's that? You have to do it for every project. What is you, if you wanted all of your projects to be able to use the camera, yes, you would do taco, plug-in, add camera. But we're going to do this for a template. So when we make a brand new project, we just use the template because it has all the plugins. Okay. Sorry, question here. <coughs> <coughs> I typed those in by hand last night, and some of them I messed up because it would do it, and then it would say this one is wrong. Yeah. Can I do it again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It took me a long time. So that's how I teach. Uh, do it the hard way first, and then the easy way. It's my text file. 
So we're waiting, that, waiting for that a bit more, and then we'll go on. That's going to give us 19 plugins, 19 aspects of the device we can access. The device feature, its vibration, sound, um, the ability to send text messages and write to the and write to the um, device and all of that. So just wait a moment. Sometimes it's a little faster or slower since we're all connected to the internet.
All right, so eventually you get all of these plugins. My handout further goes on to just to confirm this. We've got step um, uh, step eight, taco build. Notice I say we usually skip build because we go directly to actually running it. But I will build it at this point without running it just so that it's faster on future steps. So once that completes, type taco build. I did not say taco build Android or taco build browser. Technically those are two different apps, right? The browser and the app or iPhone. If I added taco, cre uh, taco ad platform iOS, if I do taco build, it's going to build a version for all of them. It's going to do it for Android, and then it's going to do it for browser, and then it's going to do it for iOS. But if I type taco build iOS, it will only build the iOS version. For us, let's just build it one time here, because again, the first time slow, and then once we proceed, after that, the next builds will be faster, because you're going to see that it says updated, already updated, already updated. Looking a little further, number nine. You, at this point, this is the point where I would say to do it because you've just created an app. So if you're going to create a brand new app from the beginning, you would do it at about this point. Sure. You don't have to do it many more times after that because usually you'll be doing Taco Run or Taco Emulate, which already does a build. Yes. So if I wanted to just save the folder so that I could repurpose it for a different purpose, you know, different app. Mm -hmm. At what point would I stop? You could stop right here. Before the build? No, I would do it after the build because then again, what all this basic stuff we've added, I'm going to use over and over, the camera and such. So I would build it right now, save myself some time later. I could <coughs> then stop and not do this next part because then that, we're going to target this a little bit more for our class. But you could stop at this point, and then when you make new apps, take it from there. Mm -hmm. So this is when, hopefully, you've got an i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and all of that, because this is where you're going to wait for it to compile, especially when you start to add more platforms. Mine's done. One minute, 29 seconds. If yours is not quite there yet, oh, and then it did browser. So if yours is not quite done yet, you'll catch up in just a moment because our next steps are we want to then also set up our config file for our template. Again, this template, we, wanna, we want it to be the seed of our future apps. I also want to set a few things in my config XML file to be basic things for my future apps. So in this case, I need to then, <coughs> on Windows Explorer, I need to go over to my flash drive. So open up Windows Explorer, go to my flash drive, there's my apps folder. Open up the apps folder. You will see template folder, and you will see config.xml. You're going to right click that, edit it in Notepad, plus plus. And then as per my instructions, on line 2, change version 001 to anything you want. I'm going to recommend, and this is totally personal, how you want to do it, however you want to do version numbers. I'm going to do them like this. This is going to be version 1.0.20603. Today's the third day. See my, oh, see my genius year. way of naming this? Yeah. Year, day, year. Yeah. So this is version 1 of my project. Later on next month, next year, whatever, I'm going to make version 2. So next year, I'll make version 2, dot what, 207, whatever. I'm putting the date here at the very end. And a big version number at the top. Right now, I'm using Cordova 6. Eventually, we're going to get Cordova 7 with brand new cool features. That might be an incentive for me then to reprogram my app for the new features. 
So then I'm going to make version 2 point whatever of my app. This can be whatever numbers you want. Maybe you call it version 1, and then when I make a few minor updates three months from now, it'll still be version 1, but it'll be version 1.1.2006.503. Whatever way you want to name this. It, this really doesn't matter what you call it. When we'll say in a moment, Android version code will matter, but this doesn't quite matter. It's for you. Yes? I can't predict the future. I don't know how much Cordova will change between versions. It was a big change from version 2 to 3. But from what I've seen from 3 to 4 to 5 to 6, not that much, really. 5 and 6, 5 and 6 are very, very similar. I did see 4 to 5 a little difference. 5 and 6 is not so bad. I don't know how much 7 will change. That's why on, on the first day I said, don't update your code in the middle of a project, because you don't know what has changed and what will cause you to stop and learn something new if you're simply working on your app. So I wouldn't change any of your base code here until it's, it's done. My handout then says that we add some sort of version number, whatever, number you like there. Uh, after the version number, this is the one that really matters. Android dash version code, and notice that code is capital letter, and notice it says 1. So after version quotes space Android dash version code with a capital C equals quote end quote 1. <coughs> Android version code. This is specifically for Android. It's prefaced Android dash, like we saw here, Windows dash. Only Windows will pay attention to this. Version 8, that doesn't mean anything to Android. Android dash version doesn't mean anything to Windows, to iPhone, etc. What this is saying, this is something that Google requires, that you add a version code that increments in whole numbers. The number back here is just a gibberish string of numbers. Google ignores it. This is version 1 of our code. We're going to work on our code for these three months. We're going to finish it, upload it to Google. It's version 1 of the code. We may work on it 10 times throughout the now and the end of the course. And we, we may be upgrading our version number here. We may put version 2604. But we're still going to keep this one 1 until we really upload a new version to Google Play eventually. So it, right now it doesn't quite make sense, but that number, you only change it when you're uploading a new version to the App Store. When I upload the next version of my project in six months, I have to put that at two. If I try to upload it still version one, it'll reject it and it'll tell you. But eventually when I do upgrade, when I do big updates from my app, and I'm going to resubmit it to the App Store, I have to increment that by whole numbers. 1, then 2, then 3, to 900, whatever. Yes? So do you need a new config file for the Windows version for the iOS version? Nope, this config file handles it all. We've got a section for Windows, we've got a section for iOS, and we've got a specific version number for Windows. So we just use this one config file. So notice this, we have to add this one. That's why we're adding this to the template. I don't want to forget this on a future app. Android version code, 1. We're always on 1, and then we get to version 2 eventually. What I hope to accomplish in this class is that we finish our project, we upload it to the, to the App Store, and then we will do some more tweaks for it, do, do some more testing for it, and then we're going to upload a new version of it back to the Google Play for the whole process. And so we would have to go back and make sure that's version code 2. Upload. It is the one for the one I'm going to upload. Okay, so every time you add something new, Every time you make a big change, yeah, you have to upgrade it to the next level number you still have to increase that because if you make a little change, let's say here I want to target 8.2, 8.2 is 
That's still a new change to our code. It has to be number two, small change, big change, but it has to increase to another number when you upload it to Google. So that version can stay the same forever, but that one does need to change incrementing one value every time you change anything anywhere in the code. Again, right now it's a little confusing because we're not there yet, but for the moment it starts off with one. Add your own description in line four, add your own email and website in line five. So now is the time to think about, and you can change it of course later, but there's a description here. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut all of that out and it, it just have it say, so inside of description, I'm just going to have it say very basically, template Cordova project. Anything. Doesn't matter. This is my template file, my template project that I'm going to use in future website, uh, with future apps. So that description will be fine. Uh, you can decide if you want to put a real or fake email and website and the name of your app company. So put whatever you want there. This can be edited whenever you want, of course. Uh, you don't have to go through the whole process at the moment to really set up a developer's account yet. And that'll be in month three. In month three, we will go up to Google Play or Amazon or iTunes, whatever. We will go get a real developer's account. Um, and uh, here at this point, this can be anything. Just so that it's not the default Cordova stuff. Add your company name, save this file. If you haven't done so yet, save it. <coughs> Before platform name Android, so basically on line 18, uh, we're going to add a new preference here. I've got a preference so that you have to decide this, but for our project, for our future projects, our apps will be vertical. Right now, you saw that you can rotate it and it goes horizontal. If you don't want rotation, you can lock it down, which is what step six is saying. I want my app, the one we're going to develop in this class, to be portrait always. I don't want to go landscape and it changes. I want it to be portrait. And if you think about it, most of the apps you use are always locked in portrait orientation anyway. If you don't want it to lock down, don't use this line. But I, I want that, so I'm going to add, notice the syntax, preference, name, value. Later on, we'll add another one, preference, name, value. And there's already one up here, preference, name, value. So before line 18, give yourself a new line 18. We'll type open close angle brackets. And uh, since this is, a, this is a single tag that does not have a pair, platform has pair, but allow intent does not, preference does not. So we have to write the tag and self-closing. Notice all of these close on their own here like that. We have to write it like this. Open close angle bracket, self-close, slash, space, angle bracket, space, slash, angle bracket. That's the syntax for XML tags here. And we want preference, space, name, equals quotes, space, Value equals quotes. That's the basic syntax of a preference. I preference. Not today. I got an extra line of extract market. What's that? Locking in extract market. Prefer close. You got the deadline. Uh, sorry, just. Up the geo. 
no, 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 just let me type this because I'm distracting myself. Let me type this. And then, sorry, what are you doing? Yes. So, preference main value. My handout is saying we're going to add a preference to lock the orientation. So, specifically, name is orientation, capital O, value is portrait, lowercase. Name is orientation, capital O, value is portrait. So now, our app is locked to portrait. All the apps, iPhones, Androids, Windows Phone, because it's not set in a platform-specific section. Whenever you add something outside of a section, it applies to all the devices. If we had put this one only in the Android section, only the Android devices would be locked portrait. And iPhones would still be landscape if I want. Question? Um, I'd like to um, add a comment. Is it possible to do that in this uh, I. I, I don't believe so in the config XML for this. You can make comments in plain old XML, but I don't think so on this specific XML. I'd have to look it up. Comments would be nice, but I think I've read that you shouldn't put comments. Have you been running it and testing if it works? Um, we have to look that up because I think I've seen that you shouldn't add comments to this because well it's XML so that might not quite be compatible so we'll look it up um, next we have uh, add a preference for disallow <coughs> over scroll true at the moment it you, you don't really see it on our on our Cordova test project yet but if we had an app that we can actually scroll up and down for content. Eventually, when you get to the end of the screen and you try to keep, keep scrolling, you'll get a little bit of a feedback, visual feedback. You see that most often on a website. You go on Android to uh, a website, and if you get to the end of the page, it kind of like does a little bounce animation. We, we don't want that. We don't want that sort of website feedback on our app. You don't quite see that on most real apps, the page ends. So disallow over scroll prevents that web site behavior so that our app feels more like an app and not a website. I don't want to break the illusion that this is a, a website, it's an app. And one way around that is to disallow over scroll. So to save myself perhaps a little typing, I'm going to copy that preference I just typed because it's the same syntax. Preference name value. I just change the name and the value. And the value is disallow over scroll. Right? Disallow over scroll. One word, uppercase D, uppercase O, has to be that way. And this time a value of true. We're going to say yes, disallow the over scroll. No, don't let that little bounce animation distract from the app. We can't really, I can't really show you what it looks like right now, but once we add content and such, we can put that back to false and we can see, oh, okay, I see a little animation at the end. Maybe you do or don't want it. And I'm going to turn it off. Value false. I need another preference, so I'll just paste it in again. And this time, that preference, background color. I'm going to add a background color. When I go from screen to screen, I might get a flash of a basic basic background color because I've got these two pages that exist on top of a background. If I never define that background color, it may be jarring within my app. So I can define a color, and I have to do it in hexadecimal. So I have to type 0x. That's not an O. That's a 0. 0x. Zero usually hexadecimal is six digits. That's not six digits. This includes also a transparency pair. So that's for how transparent is my color, and then there's my color. Hexadecimal is six values. That one is for transparency, and that means it's hexadecimal. So it's a not transparent blue color. That is a valid color, and it's a nice blue color. 
What's that? So I want here background color, capital B, capital C. And then on value here, again, be careful here, you'll get the wrong color. 0x, f, f, a, b, c, d, e, f. There's a website that collects all of these hexadecimal color codes that kind of look like words. So a little sidebar here, because this is fun. Um, did you know that you can write badass in XML uh, or CSS? B A D A five five CSS, which is C five five. L O L one zero one F D I F D one bonus, etc. <laughs> in hexadecimal, and it's not coffee colored, but C O F F E. And so some of them are like a little trying too hard. Uh, gag, 6A6. Erotic is E2071C. Sure. Failed, crisis, etc. Sparta, Sparta. That 9 does not look like a P to me. Google, kind of sad. So yeah, you can make funny, it's TARDIS. You can make funny uh, color codings, and that can be what you think. Facade, oh, that's creative. Whoa. Sometimes all the best. What's that? You said time to spend. Time to spend, yeah. Ladies, arrest. Anyway, this color that we put in here, so yeah, this is a valid color, A, B, C, D, E, F. It's a sh little shade of blue. So uh, let's see, I've got a few more preferences, and notice these preferences are specific to Android. So within the Android section, I need to add preference name, Android Min SDK version and Android target SDK version. Here's where I'm targeting what version of Android. Because on these previous lines, I'm saying target Windows version 8.1, not 8.0, and Windows Phone 8.1, not 8.0. This um, For Windows, these are the minimum versions of Windows that my app will work on. I'm saying here, uh, these are the minimum versions of, of Android, and it's it's in the APK number. Remember I said it's under either APK number, it's either under you know OS version number, or it's under code name. 14 is 4.0, which I don't remember the code name. But I need those preferences that say my app will run on, or need to run on at least Android 4.0. Sorry 3x people, sorry 2x people, but at a certain point those, those devices are very, uh, very old. And in the older classes, when we used to target, starting with version 8, uh, we were able to target version 2 Android devices, but they acted so weird, especially with animations. We would select the, like the flip animation, and the whole screen would rotate in a weird way, because it didn't understand that, that 3D transition. So we're saying starting with 14 up, which is 4.0, our app is, is for you. So I'm going to... Again, I'm, I'm going to put this under preference, and it it doesn't matter. Uh, you've got platform name Android, platform name Android, platform name Android. It doesn't matter, and they kind of separated it just to show you this is stuff about that. This section is about icons. This section is about splash screens. They could have put them all in one big platform Android section, so it doesn't matter in which of these we put it in. I'm just putting it into the closest one to us, which is 21. So in this one, I'll enter, and then I'll add the preference. In this one, again, make sure it's spelled exactly the same. Android-min SDK. Only the capital S. Only the S is capital, not the whole SDK. Min SDK version, capital V. Fourteen.
version. So, Android-Nin SDK, be careful there. S is capital, but not the DK. Version 14. And then Android Target SDK version. Same target. This is also tied to which version of Taco we had when we, when I, uh, Taco slash Cordova, when I was teaching the class on earlier semesters and we had Cordova 5 or Cordova 4, we could put a value of 8, which I believe is, is Android 2.2. Um, as Cordova Taco itself has evolved and now in version 6, it doesn't even really deploy to version two of Android anymore, version value eight. So the tools itself evolve and they leave behind the older devices. If you really want your device your app to target older devices, you have to read how to install Taco version um, you know four instead of six. And then you'll be able to do value eight, which is Android 2.2. Not worth it. And then basically here, um, make sure you save that config file. We don't need anything else at the moment. Save that config file and close it. I have found that it's better to close the config file before we do the next steps. I guess I should have put it in the handout. Close the config file before you do any of the taco build or taco run. I've been noticing that when you leave it open and you do taco build, Notepad keeps complaining the file has changed. Would you like to reload it? So I'll save it and close it and then do my next step, which is back to uh, back to the command prompt. Yes? Yeah, number seven, you had uh, the overscroll. You have true on the handout, you have false on the file Oops. that you saved. Oh, did I write false? The one in the handout, which is true, so I might have uh, not noticed what I did. Yes, true. We want true. So line 19. We want to disallow overscroll, just like my handouts. I should read my own handouts. Disallow overscroll true. It would give you like a little bounce animation once you scroll too far. Okay, so now we'll save that and run it. Uh, we'll, we'll save it uh, and close it. And then we'll go back to command prompt. And um, I'm going to do a taco build again. Um, my handout, I know it says do taco run or taco emulate. But I want to build it just so that, again, I've got my most up-to-date versions of my code, and then I can decide what to do next. If I've got a real device, I would do Taco Run. If I had a virtual device, I would do Taco Emulate. So at this point, it's a good idea to build, and then we'll take our break. It's 8.46. Let's take a break until 8.56, and then we'll come back.